good Tuesday morning YouTube how are you guys doing today so this morning I want to talk to you guys <coughs> about a trend that I have been seeing lately uh, on the media there have been a lot of um reports concerning black women being killed and murdered um and it would appear that they're on the rise but what actually is going on is that we are seeing a, a few more supports about a few more reports about it hold on let me try to switch my my thing here get on the phone so anyway I want to talk to you guys about a couple of cases this morning um because we know that um when 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 uh, horrific crimes happen to uh black women you know throughout the United States in particular and, and even in our black community um we don't we don't see as much efficacy concerning those types of crimes especially um when they're being perpetrated upon black women do you see what I'm saying and uh, hey kings man and um and I wanted to talk to you guys, like I said, about two stories in particular. Okay, now we all know um, that Breonna Taylor uh, was shot down, you know, by police in Kentucky via a no-knock warrant. One of those officers, uh, hey, make it happen, Manny. Uh, one of those officers uh, has been arrested. Nobody has been charged um, with her murder, you know. But and also we have um, Olawan Toyin. She was that Salu. Salau, I think, I'm sorry. Uh, I think she was the 19-year-old black woman, the, B, the Black Lives Matter protester. She was 19 years old. She was reported missing on uh, June 6th. Her body was found in an abandoned house uh, on June 13th. Uh, a black man killed her by the name of, of uh, Aaron Glee Jr. And uh, also, I just read a story about a young mother. She was 23 years old. Her name was Shy and Moore. She was shot as well as her three-year-old daughter, Sh Sh Shania Miller, I think her last name was. I might get the, I be, might be having the uh, names mixed up, but she was 23. Her daughter was three-year-old. She was found shot dead in a car in Baltimore, Maryland, and come to find out she was murdered by the, the father of her unborn child. He shot and killed them uh, and left them in a car in Baltimore. He was out, he was in Aaron Glee uh, Jr. He's a black man. And also the person that killed this 23 year old uh, mother, uh, he was a black man as well. And, um, you know, we, we see a lot of dysfunction on the internet in particular um, when it comes to black men in particular speaking derogatorily about black women. Um, Diddy Renee, well, I'm going to talk about them today. Uh, like I said, we gonna we, we we see a lot of a lot of derogatory things going on online on social media. You know, when it comes to black men speaking ill about black women, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, they killed the baby too. I'm gonna read the article for you guys. We're gonna read it together, okay? And uh, as you know, and she was pregnant, so he he murdered his own child, and it was a boy. So anyway, we, we'll get into that. But the reason why I want to talk about these things today, um. I want to talk about them. Number one, I am a black woman. You guys know, uh, I know a couple of you uh, for sure have heard me, um, you know, asking black women to divest from abuse, right? So in, 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 in that frame of mind, when it comes to online, um, like I said, you hear all these derogatory things coming out of black men. Out, you, you have you hear black men online talking about they want to see black women, you know, dead and drowning in their own blood. They want to see them chopped up. They, they you know, they want to see them this. They want to see them that. You know, all this, that, all kind of derogatory stuff. But you also have black women that are, you know, you know, twerking in these chats. Uh, you know, try, some of them try actually have gotten with some of these black men online. And the reason why these two uh, cases in particular struck me is because of the ages. The Aaron Glee Jr., he was 49 years old, about typical age uh, for some of these derogatory, uh, you know, verbally abusive black men uh, in this sector in particular. Do you see what I'm saying? And well as the young man that killed the, the, his, his child's mother, um, I think he was like 23 or 24 years old also. Also uh, a typical age, you know, and I got to thinking, you know, 
These are the same type of men that we listen to on a daily basis, you know, verbally abuse, you know, black women online, but you have black women. I don't care. I don't know if it's, you know, because you, you know, you think it's online and you're not taking it seriously, but you twerking it. And some of them even co-signing. There are several black women that co-sign this dysfunctional, um, you know, behavior. Do you see what I'm saying? And that is not cool. And you, you, you we hear a lot of black women on here talking about relationship issues uh, and derogatory black men. Hey, smart show, how you doing? I seen you in a long time, and you know, you know, but you know, they they speak it ill about some of these, um, you know, platforms that spew all this anti-black woman rhetoric, right? But when they come uh, into their circle, they're 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 admitted into their circle in open arms, and what you're doing is you're co-signing the dysfunction. Okay, and like I said, these these two black men in particular, uh, they were they were the average ages of guys we see uh, online in this in this sector, you know, every day, speaking the same rhetoric, you know. And I got to thinking, well, what if this Aaron Glee Jr., the forty nine year old black man, uh, what if he you know twerks in these chats, or what if these tw this twenty three year old boy that killed his child's mother, what what if he's in these chats? Do you see what I'm saying? You got black women co signing it. So not only are we not advocating for ourselves, we know that the black community in general is not. Uh, 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 yeah, she was pregnant with his son. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it's too much. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it's too much. And if you really want these people to uh, these men in particular um, to to, uh, you know, take you seriously about your complaints about them, if you want to be saw as uh, something worthy of, you know, not being murdered, okay? Why are you co-signing the rhetoric? Why are you only talking about relationship issues? And if you're talking about relationship issues, why aren't you talking about domestic violence issues? You hear women, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, talking about, well, I'm a rest of my femininity and I'm not going to advocate for men. And I understand that. But you're also on the other side of your mouth. You're saying you got a daughter. So are you advocating for your daughter? Are you telling your daughter, you know, teaching her the proper way to choose wisely? And if, do you know how to choose wisely? Because when I look at some of these chats and some of these chat rooms, these women are like 30 and 40 years old. They already call you too old. They call you over the hill. They call you whatever it is that they call you. But but nevertheless, you still backpedaling and pussy popping for them in a chat. And you know they don't like you. You know, but they'll talk to you in the back chat and try to get with you. And some of these women are so gullible, they have actually had relationships online with some of these men and know that these men be talking crazy about them. Do they think do y'all think they lied about what they say about y'all? No, they're not. No, they're not, because we know for a whole lot of reasons that black men, black women and black men, we have a whole lot of trauma that we have to deal with on the on a daily basis. And in particular, uh and I don't mean, uh, this is not a gender war topic, and I'm not trying to be divisive, but I want us women, like when I say divest from invest, uh, divest from uh, abuse, this is what I mean, because these stories are absolutely horrific uh, uh, to me, because they were perpetrated at the hands of black men, and we know Beyonce Taylor, that was police brutality, but we also have heard stories recently of black women uh, in swirl relationships being killed by Anglo men as well. OK, and we have to learn to choose better and we have to learn to protect ourselves because there is nobody else really that is going to protect us but, uh, but us. So while we are having these conversations, I think we need to start having some real conversations when it comes to abuse, the amount of, you know, mental disorder, you know, especially coming from black men. Do you see what I'm saying? Black men. We know that as a whole, collectively, you know, black women, even though. You know, we hear these stories. We, we still want to, in public, you know, try to, you know, protect them. They don't do the same thing for us. Do you see? And, and so when you see women on here talking about, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, you know, advocate for them. You have to understand why. You know, and I, I get it. But, but for somebody like me, I still have to advocate for non-dysfunctional black men, in particular, the men in my family. Now, I am not ever going to 
uh, uh, get out and, 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 and advocate for a man that is hurting a woman, a man that is de perpetrating domestic violence against a woman, some type of sexual abuse uh, uh, against a woman, uh, a pedophilia against the woman. That woman, I can't think of her name. She started the Me Too campaign. She was a black woman. There are so many videos uh, from black men um, speaking very derogatorily about this black woman. Every, everything from how she looked to, you know, just whatever, just ripped her apart on social media. She started the Me Too uh, uh, Foundation, you know, a campaign hashtag on Twitter to, to uh, bring light to the amount of black women that get sexually harassed in the workplace. Now, we know that that Me Too movement was pretty much taken over by white women. Do you see what I'm saying? But they still, when they found out that a black woman started it, they still just drug her to the ground. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, fashionista said a lot of these men on YouTube are verbal and they are verbally and physically abusive and you can tell by the amount of hate that they have in their voice that it's not just online but unfortunately a lot of women don't believe that uh, it, it, they think they're just talking you know, they're just saying these things. They're not believing that they really act like this. And then they go meet them offline and it always ends up really, really badly. You have women talking about stuff about financial abuse. We know that, uh, you know, but men have always, black men in particular, have always, and some white men uh, have always um, tried to get over on black uh, women, especially as finances. You know, they learn that from young boys. If you don't teach your young man when you're raising him to, uh, you know, be a be independent and be able to um stand on his own, do you see what I'm saying? He will, you know, go and you spoiling him and all of this and all of that. He will take that uh with him throughout his adult life. So when he finally has to leave your home, he will find some other woman to uh, take advantage of because he don't know how to take care of himself or he too lazy to take care of himself. These are also forms of abuse that we need to be, that women need to be divesting from. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you teach a man how to treat you. Do you see what I'm saying? Or, and, and you also teach your boys, if you're raising them, how to treat women, how to treat themselves. Because one day those little boys that you're sp spoiling and coddling and pacifying, you're creating monsters. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you're not teaching them to stand on their own. Do you see what I'm saying? And um, Smart Show said, good thing my grandma raised me on uh, home training. That's why home training is everything. Hey, Snazzy girl, I absolutely agree with you. You know, a lot of black women, you know, uh, I, I did a post a little while ago when I mentioned that we are going to be the ones, black women, pretty much going to have to be the ones to to raise our warrior class, what I meant by that, a lot of people took it the wrong way, took it out of context. But what I meant by that is we have a lot of single mothers, in particular in the black community, but not only in particular, but not only in the black community uh, in the world, but particularly I'm talking about the black community um, because I'm black. Okay, we have a lot of single moms raising his sons. So either you coddle them too much, you baby them too much, you try to, um, you know, protect them by any means necessary too much. You know, you don't teach them how to, how to, how to stand. Uh, a, a lot of black women, um, you treat their sons like, like they're, their man. Do you see what I'm saying? Not in a, you know, in any kind of a predatory sense, but you know, treat them like a, like you would treat your boyfriend. These men, these these boys, they are not your boyfriends. They are not your men. They are your children. Uh, they'll 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 they'll, they'll treat their, some of them must treat their sons badly because they don't like the father. Do you see what I'm saying? That's not fair. That is raising your son in particular up in the midst of dysfunction. Do you see what I'm saying? And because this has been going on so long, you know, and Smart Show said, you know, his grandmama, uh, you know, raised him. And, he, you know, because of that, he had a great amount of positive home training. We don't have a lot of positive home training in the black community for a whole lot of reasons anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? The emotional substitute for men. Thank you, Estelle. That is, that is, that is, uh, you know, yeah, you're right about that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh emotional substitute for a man. They are not just emotional substitutes for men. Do you see what I'm saying? That 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 is you can't raise them like that. That that is your child. That is not your your man by proxy. Do you see what I'm saying? And you can't raise them that way because when they um the thing is they just is the fun 
dysfunctional. Yes, you have to be just as dysfunctional uh, if you're raising that child up to be your substitute man. If you're raising that child up not to be independent, you are just as dysfunctional. More so, you're just as you're you're more dysfunctional because you are the mother, you are the authority figure. Do you see what I'm saying? And he's going to raise up, and when he grows up, he's either going to hurt hate you. Or he's going to um, be so coddled by you that he will never be able to leave your side. Or he will find a woman that is going to treat him the same way that uh, mama treated him, which is spoil him. He can sit at home all day, eat cereal, play video games while you go out to work and nothing is required of him. That is dysfunction. You're absolutely right, Ernest Sapp. And we have to stop these things because they're coming very, becoming e increasingly dangerous to the black community. Do you see what I'm saying? And also, you know, I shouldn't have to preface every time I have one of these conversations, I get several comments uh, in the comment section and they'll be like, well, such and such ain't like that online. And this, that, and the other ain't like that online. If you know you're not like that and you're a black man, if you know that you are not the one perpetrating all of this dysfunction, then you should know because you are grown that I am not talking about you. If the shoe don't fit, don't put it on. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I am for the betterment of black men and black women. I am pro-black, but I am pro-black woman first. That's why I speak largely in part when I'm, when I'm referencing a conversation. Uh, I'm speaking to black women, okay? Because we are the bearers of a whole lot in this black community. Do you see what I'm saying? In a good way as well as in a bad way. You know, you have to be careful how you raise your son. I always tell my nieces, you have to be careful what you say and how you treat your son. I got a nephew that's 13 years old. Next year, he will be getting a job. He'll be 14 years old. He can work. He will be getting a job. You will not be coddled. You will not be. You will not disrespect women. You will not be. And we do not disrespect him. Do you see what I'm saying? He is not treated badly. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you have to be careful. Because men are sensitive. We always think that men are strong. And, you know, boys ain't supposed to cry and all of this and all that. And because we have that stereotype, you know, in, in, you know, through, you know, between our races of people, you know, boys don't cry. We've all heard that throughout the races of people, ethnicities, 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 and everything. That's just not in the black community. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, you have to stop thinking that a black man can, a, a man in general, can bear the brunt of everything on his shoulders. Do you see what I'm saying? A lot of us never think to consider, you know, that. He is going through something also. And when you don't consider that, you know, and black men in particular in the United States of America, I seen a comment where one black man said that we're talking about father day the other day. He was saying, how can we be fathers if America won't let us be men? I found that particularly um, unfortunate for him to say that because we know that we have, because of systemic racism, the black man has a target on his back. But even though you have a target on your back, that does not, uh, uh, it should not cause you to think that you can't be a man because of the white man. That's ridiculous. That don't make sense to me. Do you see what I'm saying? And then, um, and so, and, and, and right, I mean, as you can't coddle them either. You know, it's, it's a very, very thin rope, a very th thin line when it comes to, um, you know, raising your child. That's right. Uh, I'm mean, raising your warriors, raising your soldiers, especially if you are a single black mother. It's a tightrope almost. You can fall off that rope at any moment, you know, and your child will have to suffer the consequences of you falling off that rope. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, um, like I said, it's, it's, I just don't like when, you know, I hear all these black men speaking derogatorily about black women. I don't like when I hear, you know, black women speaking derogatorily about, um, you know, black men. Do you see what I'm saying? You know, it, but I don't, I also don't like it when, um, when one side is being advocated for and the other side is not. Do you, that is also an imbalance. Do you see what I'm saying? That is not a perfect, a good example of reciprocity. We can't protect our men and boys and not protect our girls. 
Do you see what I'm saying? We can't spend more time um, focusing on our boys and less time focusing on our girls. And I fear that, you know, and we have seen perfect examples of women. We Black women were once uh, thought to be the pinnacle of self-respect, the, the pinnacle of morality, the pinnacle of self-worth. So much so that even today, us Black women, a lot of Black women, you know, don't have very high self-esteem. Do you see what I'm saying? And that is because of the world beating you down and making you, and taking away your morality, taking away your self-confidence, not only the world, but black men, because they feel in, in, insecure. And, and our men, you know, a, a lot of them, dysfunctional ones, you know, feel uh, uh, intimidated by your, your strength or, you know, whatever it is they feel intimidated by. Do you see what I'm saying? They make a lot of excuses. And in particular, when it comes to black men, they will, you know, they will beat you down with words and fists and everything else because they feel like the man is beating them down and they can't beat the man down. So they're going to beat you down because they're not scared of you. Do you see what I'm saying? But they're scared of him. They're scared of that white man in his jail and his gun and his whatever else and his rope, but they're not scared of you. So they want to take out all their woes on you. That is mental, that is a mental uh disorder. That is dysfunction. And that should not be tolerated. Do you see what I'm saying? And so that's why right. we need each other. Uh, I'm, I said, I'm going to read this, y'all. I don't like it on either side. I don't either. We need each other uh, and need to stick and work together. We came from, that's right. We came from each other, you know. And so I just really want to preface, I just really wanted to say that, guys, um, the smart show says we can't expect others to treat us with respect if we don't respect our own community. You are absolutely right about that, the smart show. That is perfectly put. You are absolutely right about that. You know what I mean? Which is in part the reason why, like I said, we our, we have we know that as black people, we have to fight on several fronts, fronts at one time. You know, we know that you know black men are getting killed. You know, black women are getting killed too. But we can't just advocate for the black black men. We have to advocate for black women too. Do you see what I'm saying? Because we need each other. And like the smart show said, you know, we can't expect nobody to respect our life. We know that our life matters. You know, if we don't respect the fact that we know that our life matters. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, I, I just, like I said, this is not no gender war thing. I'm talking about us as a people. Do you see what I'm saying? We have to learn to do better. We have to to try to find some way to deal with all the dysfunction that is going on in our community so that we can be a better people. Because see, the world is changing. Whether we are ready for the world to change or not, the world is changing. Do you see what I'm saying? The face of blackness is changing in this United States of America in particular. Do you see what I'm saying? So when you start to see a rise in these types of violent crimes, you know, you're going to have to speak up and going to have to start advocating for women just as much as you advocate for men. Do you see what I'm saying? And a lot of, uh, and, and black women in particular, you know, we've been thought of historically by the Anglo, we can bear the brunt of the pl uh, uh, bear the brunt of pain. A lot of people call black women the mules, you know, the mules for not only the black community, but the mules, the workhorses for the world. You know, we were thought to, they, they say that black women can bear more pain, you know, than, than any other race or woman, all this here and all this. That is not true. Do you see what I'm saying? We feel pain just like everybody else feel pain, you know, at, at the same rate. We can't tolerate more. But why would you put that kind of stigma on the black woman? Why would you do that? Why would you think that, oh, she's going to be all right? Yeah, her girl got killed and her baby, but she's going to be all right. They're going to be okay. Do you see what I'm saying? It's all types of, you know, dysfunction that never goes, that never gets addressed. And so... um. This morning, because I've been talking about um, all of that in head of time, but I want to preface all that, and we're going to talk about, um, yes, they do. They say that about us, Estelle. Yes, they do. Uh -huh. We're going to talk about these two um, crime stories, horrific crime stories in particular, okay, as a means uh, of shedding light. Uh, on some of these, uh, a couple of these crimes right here, and these are just two examples of how you know a lot of a, a lot of people are not 
speaking about Ola Juan Toy, and I have seen a couple of live streams about her, but not as many live streams about what happened to her as what happened to somebody like a George Floyd, you know what I mean? Or even a Ray Shard, or what was his name, Ray Shard Brooks, or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? People are talking, and then, then that Ray Shard Brooks case in particular is disturbing to me on a whole lot of levels. <clears throat> now, we know the police brutality side of it, but what the other side of it that disturbing to me when it comes to uh, the Rayshard Brooks case, because I honestly feel like if Rayshard Brooks had been at home with his family and his wife instead of out, you know, with, with his Anglo side chick drunk to the point to where he was sleeping in Wendy's parking lot, he didn't even know what county um, he was in. Do you see what I'm saying? Perhaps if he was at home, doing the right thing, he would not be dead right now. And I have to say it, I hate to say it like that, it, but it's the truth. Now you've got his wife, you know, on TV all over the world crying for him because he was shot in the back like a dog, which is absolutely reprehensible, you know, but not only does she have to deal with that, she has to deal with her children not having a father anymore. She has to deal with the fact that the whole world knows that her black man was out drunk and partying with an Anglo woman at the time of his death. You see what I'm saying? And that's added insult to injury. You know, so she, she's dealing with a couple of things at one time. She's grieving her husband. She probably mad at him because he was out cheating. You know, she her, her children are grieving the loss of their father. You know, you know she's, she's probably, you know, her little girls are young, but eventually they're going to find out, you know, what, what situation, what he was dealing with at the time, you know, surrounding, you know, the time of his murder. Do you see what I'm saying? How's she going to explain that to them when they get a little bit older? See, all this old unnecessary stuff that we need to deal with in this community at one time. And it don't make no sense. It's so unfortunate. You know, Jim Sir said, I agree with you about Ray Shard. Um, I know he was grown, but I was wondering why would his woman let him drive? I, child, who knows? You know what I mean? But if he would have been at home with his wife and family, perhaps. He wouldn't have found himself in that devastating situation. You know, her right a couple of weeks before Father's Day. It, it don't make no sense to me, you know. So, yeah, it's like like I said, the woman got a whole lot of stuff to deal with at one time. You know, and it's, it's horrible. I, I hate that for her and her family. I hate that for Ray Sean and his family. You know, but sometimes, sometimes you need to think before you act, before you start doing all this crazy stuff. You need to think about it before you do it. They said he was so drunk, he didn't even know where he was. Okay? Wasn't it just messy? Right? A uh, beautiful array says exactly, Oracle. Um, if only he would have stayed home right instead of sneaking around right with Karen. Absolutely. Just like Steve McNeil. You're absolutely right. What if you was at home being a husband and a father that you're supposed to be instead of being so drunk? that you don't even know where you are. Why did you put yourself in that position? We, I, we, you know, we, 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 and then a lot of the times we fail to, you know, hold people accountable for their own actions. You always have to ask yourself what part that I play into this. And that Rayshard Brooks case is a perfect example of people not, uh, you know, holding him accountable for his part in it. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> So it, it just it's just unfortunate all around. But the only people left to hold the bag and grieve for this bad choice, this lack of responsibility, you know, is his wife, his kids, and his family. You know, kids me to say, girl, I know she wanna slap his car. She going through a whole lot of stuff. You know what I mean? She'll come out and, and, and support him, you know, you know, to the media. You know, she do what she got to do in the media, but what's going on at home? What's going on when she in her bedroom in the middle of the night? Do you see what I'm saying? In the midnight hour, what is she feeling about him? Can you imagine? I would be angry and grieving at the same time. Piss the freak off at him as well as the people that took his life, as well as the side chick. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm, I said he was sloppy drunk, did not know where he was. Uh, I'd rather him be at home right 
Um, like it be at home like that, right? Uh, it's just very unfortunate. Not saying he, no, yeah, no, me either. Thank you for saying that. Unfortunate. Not saying he deserved um to get shot down, but he did play. Yes, he did absolutely played a part in it. You know, and nobody deserves to get shot in the back like a dog because that was a coward move. That was an absolute coward move. But I absolutely understand what you're saying, uh, Armand Eyes. You know, and he has to be held accountable for his part in it because, like you said, if he would have been at home. He wouldn't have been going through this, you know. And so, yeah. And it's Becky burning down the windows. Child, okay. I was getting my whole life when I was reading that story the other day. I'm like, child, this is a whole a hot mess. Okay. We always have to do what. Yep. You, you rock case, man. Yep. Somebody said something about insurance. Beautiful Ray said the recognized world has continued to make our people not respect marriage and devotion within our community. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Who said something about insurance? Let me, I want to read that. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I can't even find it now. Hold on. Uh, yeah. I thought I saw somebody mention something about insurance, but yeah, I hope she had insurance on them too, if that's what you were saying, because I can't find it right now. I'm gonna ask it right. Um, we gotta be vigilant and you, yeah, sound judgment. You know, he know what's going on in the world. He know the black man, you know, has a particular big target on his back right now. Why would you be out doing that? You know, it, it, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. You know, not, not to me, it doesn't make any sense. That's a lot of emotions to deal with. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. You did beautiful, Ray. Let me try to find it because I, I want this... That's a lot of emotions to deal with. Then have a public attention. Right. I don't think I could deal with it either because you got to keep up. Really, you got to front for the world. You know, act like you're only grieving about him and you're not mad at him for freaking cheating. You see what I'm saying? With a Becky, a Karen, or whatever they call her these days. You know, and it don't make no sense. I can't even find it. I know I heard something about, I say something about insurance. But anyway, guys, let's let's go on the story because we are 32 minutes into it. I'm not trying to keep y'all uh all day like that, you know. And so uh Steve McNair, exactly. He was in and out of jail and was out for a few months before his death, uh, from what I read from what yeah, I saw a video of him speaking about probation or something like that. You know, you forgot his last name, beautiful Ray. Steve McNair. Okay, y'all. Let me pull up this story. I'm going to share the screen so that we can read these two stories and uh, we can get off, you know, get out of here. But I, I really wanted to talk about this, um, especially these two stories in particular, especially the second one, you know, especially the what well, shoot, especially the first one too. It's just horrific. These black women being murdered like this, even to a three year old child. Three year old child was murdered. Do you see what I'm saying? That don't make no sense. And the way that the man talked about killing uh, uh, Ola uh, and Salal, girl. And then, you know, I heard a lot of people saying, I'm going to pull this, I'm going to share the screen while I'm talking. I heard a lot of people online saying that he was set up. He didn't do it. I, he confessed to doing it, y'all. That 49 year old black man confessed to killing that 19 year old girl. He absolutely did it. He confessed to it several times. So anyway, I'm gonna pull up this article. Um, he was, it, it, you know, they were saying he didn't do it, and you know, some white folks done it because she was a Black Lives Matter pro. Nope, nope, he did it. He did it. So anyway, let me try to share the screen if I can. Let's see if it'll come up. Y'all know how my uh, my uh, my computer be tripping, but I had to do this on the computer today. Good thing that serial killer was caught. I know that's right. <clears throat> you know, I found out some other stuff about him too. Is this the one? Okay. Yeah, it came up. Prior to him, guys, prior to this, uh, Aaron, I'm gonna show y'all his picture real fast. If I can scroll down. Let's see here. This is this is his photo. This is his jail photo. Let's see if it'll scroll up. But anyway, prior to him, um perpetrate this crime on all the one toy and that 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 old white lady. Prior to him doing that, he had been arrested um, for assault and battery on another woman. Uh, he said that he was, uh, the report said that he was drinking um, with 
a woman and he asked her for sex and she refused him sex. And so he pushed her to the ground and start kicking her in the stomach and all of this and all of that. And he was taken into custody for that. He got bonded out by his mom, I believe. And that is why he was back out on the street. Okay. So um, he, he looked away. Look at his eyes. They look dead. But that's the very kind of guy that a lot of these females be talking to online. Do you see what I'm saying? 49 years old. He younger than me. Do you see what I'm saying? You got to be particular about who you're fooling with. Do you see what I'm saying? His eyes look dead. He look evil. You know. Yeah, he looked crazy. But anyway, I'm going to scroll back up, y'all, and we're going to read this story. Because, like I said, I want to bring this back up because details have surfaced, you know, about what exactly happened to this 19-year-old, you know, Black Lives Matter uh, activist. And when y'all read this, y'all going to be like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? It's just like a lot that was going on. Yeah, his mama should have left him in jail. I tell you that. Anything, any man or woman getting arrested in my family, you're going to stay there. You better get out by your friends or something. I don't know what else to tell you. It won't be happening for me. Child, please. Anyway. Okay. It says, uh, the article, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. It says, and uh, what we know about the deaths of Olawan Toyin Salu and Victoria Sims. Victoria Sims is the third, uh, is the 75-year-old white woman that he killed also. Now, he's trying to say that before I preface this, his, his excuse is he was drunk. But no, when you listen to these details, you know that drunk, no, this is, that is not a good excuse. Because you plotted this, and you planned this, and you thought this out. Do you see what I'm saying? You thought these grizzly crimes out. And somebody called him a serial killer, and I absolutely agree with that. Uh-huh. Yeah, the rough 49. Yeah, 49 years old. You ain't in the 60s. No. No, uh-uh. But let's read the article. It says, the article goes on to state that Aaron Glee Jr., the, the picture of the black man that I showed you guys, Aaron Glee Jr. confessed um, several times that he kidnapped and killed Olawan Toyin Salau, a student and protester, and Victoria Sims, a volunteer and retired state worker, in grisly crimes that have horrified the community. The article goes on to state that according to According to newly released court documents, Glee waived his right to remain silent and gave his account of events to officers with the Tallahassee Police Department and the Orlando Police Department. They include shocking new details, including that Glee kept Salah a prisoner in his rundown home for several days, raping her and eventually decided to kill her to avoid getting caught. The documents also reveal that Salau, 19, and Sims, 75, apparently met each other in the last days of their lives. After Glee arranged for Sims, the white woman, y'all, to pick him up and Salau at a bus stop. So he called the old white lady to give him a ride to the, you know, give him and Salau, Toyin, a, um, <coughs> a ride from the bus stop. So he didn't even have his own car. He had to call for this lady to come give him a ride. Do you see what I'm saying? The article goes on to state that Salah vanished June 6th, talking about Toyin, vanished June 6th, followed by Sims on June the 11th. On June 13th, the Tallahassee Police Department officers um, descended on his home after tracing Sims, the old woman's cell phone, to the address. So they traced her phone, her cell phone, to uh, Glee's address. That's how they found of the bodies of the two women, right? Um, you weren't that smart, was he? The sending his home after tracing Sims' cell phone to the address. They found Sims' body under a... They found an old woman's body under a bloody sheet in a bedroom and Salal's body under a pile of leaves in the woods behind the house, y'all. That's, that, that's where he left that 19-year-old child. Do you see what I'm saying? The article goes on to state that... Um, so many red, yeah, so many red flags, right? The article goes on to state that by the time, uh, behind that, by the time Glee had already bought a one, by that time, Junior here had already bought a one-way ticket to West Palm Beach, Florida. He was trying to leave town, right? Uh, bought a one-way ticket to West Palm Beach, um, where he, where he has family members. Orlando police 
working off information from Tallahassee police, intercepted him at a Greyhound bus station and arrested him. See, he was trying to flee the scene. He was trying to leave town. He bought himself a one-way ticket trying to get out of town, but he got caught at the Greyhound, okay? He complained of breathing problems, Junior did, complained of breathing problems and was taken to an Orlando hospital where he openly chatted about two murders according to the police report now see by this time now so whoever caught him a serial killer that is that is an accurate uh uh you know description of him in my opinion because you know he, he's just openly chatting about it like he's good with it you know we know a lot of serial killers they like to brag about the murders and stuff when they finally get caught you know what i mean they'll they'll go on and brag about it do you see what i'm saying and so anyway this says uh, timeline, the moments leading up to the deaths of Oluwan Toy Salu and Victoria Sims. The article goes on to state that, I'm scrolling down a little more, says, quote, while at the hospital, Glee, we're talking about Ern Jr., uh, Glee had made voluntary admissions to officers guarding him that he had murdered two women in Tallahassee. The report says he would also place a telephone call to his mother, and make these admissions. He even called his mom and told her about a child. Later that day, uh, Tallahassee Police Department officers arrived in Orlando to interview him. Wow. The article goes on to state that um, Glee, we're talking about Junior, would admit in detail that on different dates he had kidnapped and murdered both Salal and Sims, the report says. Glee told investigators he he struck up a conversation with Salal, talking about Toya, struck up a conversation with Salal June 6th at a bus stop on uh, Appalachian Parkway. She told him she had been sexually assaulted earlier in the day, something she revealed publicly on Twitter. Yeah, we know that, you know, she had said she, she had been assaulted and she talked about her uh, assault on Twitter, right? I did a video about that. The earlier video about Toya has those uh, that Twitter information in it, guys, if you didn't see it, right? Um, it goes on to state that um, he offered to pick her, he offered to take her to his house to bathe and sleep. Now, why this girl is going with this man after she'd have been assaulted one time is beyond me, but she's 19 years old. She done ran away from home. She was treated horrifically in her home. Do you see what I'm saying? This child just had a hard life her whole way. Do you see what I'm saying? And it don't make no sense. So anyway, it goes on to say that he offered to take her to his house and bathe, uh, to bathe and sleep. He said he called Sims, the old woman, uh, who picked them, who picked them both up in her white Toyota sedan. He called the old white woman to pick him up, and she came to pick him up from the bus stop. Guys, video footage captured by Star Metro buses shows this shows that Salab uh, left. Left a Leon County Branch Library on South Adams Street at 5:51 p.m. and arrived at the bus stop on Appalachian Parkway at 6:07. Uh, the footage also demonstrated that she and Glee did engage in an extended conversation while seated on a bench at the bus stop. The report says at approximately 7:07, .07, a white Toyota that I, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Uh, demonstration uh, 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 bus stop report says that approximately 707 a white Toyota the same make and model of the one owned by Sims arrived in the area of the bus stop Glee and Salah departed in the, in the Toyota months later so they have <coughs> proof of beating, uh, via the, the street cameras that show them getting in the car with a white woman the report goes on to state that Glee told investigators that after arriving at his house, Salah took a shower. Uh, he tried to have sex with her, uh, but she said no uh, and tried to fight him off. There's a quote that says, he stated that she physically resisted him and that she bit him upon his right forearm during the struggle, the report says. But Glee overpowered her. Uh, he asked if he would... He was asked if he would characterize his actions as rape. The report says Glee responded uh, in the affirmative. Glee said he kept Salah tied up and imprisoned in his home for three to five days, y'all. Remember, she was reported missing on the 6th and found the bodies found were found on the 13th. Uh, imprisoned in his home for three to five days, but wasn't sure how long because, quote, he was heavily under the influence of alcohol. 
See, that's his excuse right there. He was heavily under the influence of alcohol. Yeah, right. Anyway, the report goes on to state that he said he re he said he released her at times to eat and bathe. He admitted sexually assaulting her numerous times during those three to five days. Glee, we're talking about Junior, the black man, who has a prison record dating back decades, read that if he were to let her go, he'd land behind bars again. Glee stated that he was aware that he would be arrested and likely sentenced to prison if he allowed Salau, if he allowed Toyin uh, to leave the residence, the arrest report says. Glee indicated that he determined that his only course of action was to end her life. Wow, this 19-year-old girl. He bound her with rope uh, in a manner he thought would cause her to die and left her in a bedroom. Wow. Whew. Glee explained how over the course of several hours, he would re-enter the bedroom multiple times to see if Torian was still alive. The report says, ultimately, he entered the bedroom and determined she was deceased. Police reports, police reports say Sims, the old white woman, uh, was also bound. Investigators believe Glee ransacked her apartment on Blunstone Road, talking about the old white lady, stole her car and kidnapped her. See, this is him trying to cover up for the fact that the, he know that the white woman can tell the police that she saw him with the black girl. Do you see what I'm saying? So he uh, he killed her too. He ransacked her apartment on Blair Road, stole her, stole her car, and kidnapped her. Her car was stuck in the mud outside of his house. Wow. The article goes on to state that Glee was arrested in Orlando, uh, but brought to Tallahassee where he facing two counts of two counts each of murder and kidnapping and one count of sexual assault. He had his first court appearance uh, on the new charges Saturday via video conference. Uh, Ch Chief, Chief Circuit Judge Jonathan, Jonathan Storm ordered Glee held without bail at the request of Assistant Attorney um, Calloway Scott, um, who called him a danger to society. I agree, he's absolutely a danger to society. To me, he's a, a serial killer. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> Glee wearing an orange and white jumpsuit did not speak during the brief hearing. His Miami attorney, uh, Mauricio Padilla, advised him not to discuss the case with anyone. He already told on himself. Uh, Storm agreed with Scott, uh, noting that Glee was a flight risk given his unsuccessful attempt to escape on the bus. Uh, there's a quote that states, there are no conditions. There are no conditions that can adequately protect the public, no conditions that could ensure Mr. Glee further appearance, Storm said. Uh, the probable cause itself demonstrates the possibility of significant flight. Yeah, they found him trying to leave in the bus station. This is a picture of Torian. Let me see, let, wait till it scroll up, y'all. Sounds like something out of a horror movie. I agree with that, Stacey girl. Yeah, she was tortured for several days. You know what I mean? Uh, I want y'all to see her picture real fast before I continue. There she go. That's Tarian. That was her um, protesting in the Black Ma Black Lives Matter protest just days earlier before she was kidnapped. So the article goes on to state that I'm going to scroll down. Is that the end of it? No, that's not the end of it. What is all of this stuff right here? Uh, I didn't think it was the end of it, though. Wait a minute. I guess that's the end. End of it, guys. I think I read that fast. Okay. Yeah, that was the end of it. Yeah, that was the end of it. My fault. So anyway, he went to court. They held him without bond because they think he's a, a danger to society. Yeah, she was a precious little girl, right? Uh, Just JLK said the legal system needs to needs an expedited track. Um, uh, I guess when you open and shut cases are heard immediately. So criminals like him can be handled swiftly. Absolutely. But my thing is the thing that shook me uh, about this, this, this whole thing was the fact that um, uh, I'm going to stop this right here. That the, um, he tried to blame it on being drunk, but he clearly, he clearly, you know, had a plan to the point to where he went and he went to that white woman that picked him up. He went to her house, kidnapped her. Do you see what I'm saying? And and, and and killed her. You know, ransacked the apartment. Ain't no telling what he stole out of the apartment. You know what I mean? Just killed her just because she seen them together. But you trying to blame this on being drunk. No, you're a serial killer. 
You know, you plotted this out. It is manic behavior. I agree. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So anyway, that is the update that we have on Tarian Salal's murder. Um, and uh those are the details that he's given um the police officers. You know, he willfully, he willingly confessed to both of the murders. You know what I mean? Nobody deserves to die like this. A 19-year-old girl, that child had a hard life throughout her whole 19 years probably, you know, to just to end up like this is so sad to me. Do you see what I'm saying? But we have 50 minutes, guys, and I'm going to go on and pull up the next case. And I hate that. I hate that for that lady. They said that lady had given her life to, you know, she was, uh, she had worked with the government, with the city for years and years and years. Uh, she had, but she was now, she had retired and she was volunteering. You know what I mean? She was doing stuff in the community for other old people. No, which is probably the reason why he knew who she was. To be quite honest with you, you know, ain't no telling how he met that old white woman. And she and Tonya had met just days before. Ch I don't even know. What if he stopped them both? Who knows what really happened? You know what I mean? But let me pull up this other article for you guys. Let me show my screen again. And this is particularly... Oh, sorry about that. Oh, shoot. Ah. Oh. Ah, I couldn't answer that. I'm going to have to call him back. But anyway, uh, I needed to answer that phone too, by the way. Let me see if I can share my screen. And we're going to read this other article and we're going to get off here. Um, This is the one about the 23-year-old <coughs> mother and her 3-year-old daughter. Let me try to share this with you guys. Okay. When it pops up, we'll talk about it. Ironic how he killed two people for the community. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Let's see here. Give it a minute to come up, guys. Hopefully it'll pop up. Because my computer be true. Oh, here it comes. Okay. This guy on the screen, he has been charged with murder uh, after a pregnant woman and a three-year-old girl were found dead in Baltimore. This 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 young black man right here. Okay. So let's read what he did. This is another perfect example of you know how black women girls, black women and girls are being murdered. So this is from Baltimore, Maryland. Police say a 24-year-old man has been charged with murder after a pregnant woman and a three year and her three-year-old daughter were found dead inside a car on Friday. The victims, 23-year-old Cheyenne Miller and her three-year-old uh, Shania Gilmore, were found Friday morning on Boswell Road uh, near Hillwell, near, near Hill, I can't hardly talk, near Hillwell Road. Wow. Uh, the article goes on to state that police say the suspect is the father of the unborn child, Okay. He shot this woman and she was pregnant with her baby. Why he kill her? Because he didn't want the responsibility of taking care of his un unborn child. So the article goes on to state that there's a quote that says, I'm angry. Ariel Johnson, the victim's great aunt, told Fox 45 News, who would do this to a child, a three-year-old and a young woman who was pregnant? It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. Here is a more, this is the memorial that was set up. Uh, it says tragic a hashtag no shoot zone and memoria have been made have been made on Boswell Road in memory of 23 year old Cheyenne Miller and her three year old daughter Shania Miller. Both were found dead inside a car Friday. Police say Miller was also pregnant. The article goes on to state that Sample, which is the man's name, his last name was Sample. I don't know. I can't think of what his first name was now. Keep D Divine Sample. That's his name. His name is Divine Sample. I read that in another article. It says that Sample has been charged with first degree murder. Uh, police say he was taken into custody shortly after the bodies were found. Baltimore Police Commissioner Michael Harrison released a statement. Here's the statement. Um, it's, in part, it says this is a tragic situation where family and friends are left suffering and mourning over the loss of loved ones. I want to commend uh, the hard work of our dedicated homicide detectives for quickly apprehending the suspect uh, for this despicable act of violence. Uh, I can only pray that family and friends of the victims and our city can begin healing process. The family of the victims telling Fox 45 News that they just want answers. 
uh, quote, we've got to stop this, Johnson said. Um, this just doesn't make sense. Devin Sample, he's the one that killed the girl and the baby. Devin Sample is currently at Central Booking waiting to see a court commissioner. Homicide detectives are asking neighbors to check video footage um, or even try to recall if they heard or saw anything suspicious. Detectives are asking anyone who may have driven through the 200 block of Boswell Road around 11 p.m. Thursday, June 18th, to call this number. And um, that's all that they got on it so far. But Devin Sample, he killed. Oh, and another article said that the, the girl, she was pregnant with his son. So he killed the mother of his unborn child and her three-year-old daughter. You know, shot him in the car dead. It is it is despicable. It's absolutely disgusting. So yeah, but I don't I don't think I haven't read anywhere that you know he gives an excuse as to why he killed them yet. You know, we can only speculate. But I mean, you are you can't even be human. You killed a three year old baby and a woman that's 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 pregnant with your son. <clears throat> straight from the gate. Are you talking about the pregnant woman straight from the gate? Or are you talking about Olawan Toyin? Because we're talking about somebody else now. <laughs> Beautiful Array said, I can't fathom how one could do horrific crime knowing that they're going to jail for it. Right. Spiritual walk. You know what? You're right about that. I'm glad you said that, Beautiful Array, because, you know, we are, uh, there is a war afoot, you know, a spiritual war afoot. You know, they want to quash. They, they, they don't want you to be enlightened. Uh, they don't want you to be, they don't want you to have any care. These demons and principalities don't want you to have um, uh, any care for your fellow man. Do you see what I'm saying? The, the world is just going crazy because we are in a battle for our mortal souls. It is spiritual warfare. It is being fought in the spiritual realm, you know. And it, it is important because we are in the age of Aquarius, and the water bearer is calling, and he's bringing out a whole bunch of other, a whole bunch of old negative stuff from the other age, from the past ages. You know, beautiful race said exactly. He ain't human. No human with marvels would ever have that darkness in us. So I agree. Oh, you did well. Yeah, you yeah yeah. No, we 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 talked about all the wine first. But I think that it's so sad what happened um, to this woman and her baby, as well as her unborn child. And I hope they put him under the jail. But I wanted to share that these two articles in particular with you guys, with you ladies, um, as an example as to the amount of abuse that's going on, being perpetrated on black women, a lot of the time by black men. Do you see what I'm saying? And we have to learn to choose better. We have to learn to be more vigilant. We know that we have to fight on several fronts. You know, we have to learn how to not only protect ourselves, but arm ourselves with knowledge. You know, water spirits of the marine kingdom. I know that's right. But yeah, y'all, but uh, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I hope you guys appreciated this uh, this information. You know what I mean? And just as, as, a, as a way of giving you guys, you know, something to think about. Do you see what I'm saying? We have to be alert. We can't only be worried about what's going on online, you know, and thinking that it's only online and it's not affecting the words that are coming out of these men's mouths online. Like I said, this 23-year-old Devin Sample, the dude that killed the girl, his baby's future child's mother, as well as the 40-year-old man, you know what I mean? They are perfect examples of the guys uh, that are talking so derogatorily uh, uh, online every day. And a lot of women think that it's a joke and they meet these crazy fools offline. They tell you how they really feel about you and you don't believe it. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of dysfunction going on around here. There's a lot of demon spirits going on around here. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, it's easy for some people's spirits to become compromised, you know, especially at this time. You see a lot of these, have y'all seen the videos of all these Kearns or Beckys, whatever they want to call them, and these Brads or Chads, you know, going crazy or, uh, you know, you know, saying horrific things to black people and all of this and all that. So, honey, those are nothing more than demons, okay? You have to be prayed up and you have to be alert, you know, physically and spiritually and mentally because these things are just attacking people left and right because some of the stuff 
Some of the, these two crimes in particular are particularly heinous to me. You know, you once could never would never hear of black men doing stuff like this at one point in time. You know, but now it's become commonplace. They've gone on past domestic violence all the way on into murder. They ain't just beating you up no more. They're brutally attacking and killing you, snatching you off the street. You know, you meet them offline, you never be seen from alive again. I did a video last year. I forgot the name of the person, but it was some guy that met this. He was going around meeting black women online, and he was robbing them, raping them, and killing them. Young black men doing that to black women. It's crazy. I'm going to ask us women need to start paying, absolutely paying attention and asking questions and have a discernment. Pray to the most high for discernment in general, especially with men. That you're absolutely right, I'm going to ask. Perfect. Yeah, the real people talking. Yeah, that's real people talking online. It doesn't just stay online. That's right, Slayer Jim. You're absolutely right. Oh, you're welcome, Stacey Good says thanks for the information. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah, they are under demonic influence. This stuff is real extra. This stuff is not normal. Do you see what I'm saying? It is not normal for all of this madness to be going on. And both of those black men that we saw in those videos, if you look at their eyes, their eyes there's nothing. They don't have a soul. They're dead on the inside. They're just gone. You know, you hear these guys talking online, you better believe them. They're not just saying this stuff for, for, for you too. They mean that stuff, you know. So if they speaking it out their mouth, it's because it is in their heart. You know, and it's easier for them to do it online. We've heard some of the horrible things that they said they won't done to black women online. Or were those guys listening to the stuff online? Is that the where they got this demonic influence from? Listening to some of these chats on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram? <clears throat> do you see what I'm saying? It don't make no sense. I'm going to ask the discernment and having the strength to move away. Absolutely. When you see red flags and protection against the evil to stay away from you, you're absolutely right. Whereas when we see the signs, and a lot of people, you know, because a whole lot of reasons, women will, um, you know, push those signs to the wayside. It don't make no sense. So, yeah. Uh, beautiful Ray said, Miss Oracle, I once dated this guy from D.C., and he had some dark energy. Uh, came to find out he was on the run from killing his BF and two others. I, I, yeah, you have to be. Yes. I believe it, beautiful array. I believe it. I believe it. You see what I'm saying? Especially these young men. They look like they're cool. They real happy. And, and, and then that girl. You know, I just did the video. What was it? Last week or week before last? About that YouTuber. That beautiful long, young lady that was killed um, by her boyfriend. She had broke up with it one time. You know, because of domestic violence, and she let him back. She let him back in her life, and you know, he killed her in her apartment. You know, it's all that kind of stuff. He said he felt like a demon was on him, and he didn't feel alive. To, after he killed the girl, he felt alive, and all of this and all that. What's her name? I can't think of her name. But I just did the video about that young lady here a couple of days ago. Let's see if I can find her name out. But anyway, I'm gonna get off here, y'all. I gotta go. Uh. Let me find her name real fast. Lord have mercy. Where's the video at? But yeah, all of this, just, just all of those cats. That's another perfect example. I forgot to mention her, but she was a popular YouTuber, you know. And so, yeah. Yeah, her name was uh, Nap Queen. Popular her YouTuber, Nap Queen. She was killing domestic violence. You see what I'm saying? And so it's just sad, y'all. It's just sad. We got to stay prayed up. We got to be vigilant. We got to watch. Do you see what I'm saying? And so is that a troll? I think I got a troll in here. Nap queen, yeah. Yeah, nap queen. It don't make no sense. I think it's a troll. Hold on, y'all. This is a troll. It's got to be. So I'm going to hide the shoes because I don't need these problems. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to get off here. Uh, I hope you guys appreciated this stream. I hope you it gave you something to think about, if nothing else. You know what I mean? Because that was my intention, you know, to just to to, to make light, uh, shed some light on all of this uh, this killing of black women 
of this going on in this community. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's alarming and it's getting worse. And like somebody said, we are in spiritual warfare. We are fighting demons and principalities. You know what I mean? You look at these guys' eyes that kill these women. Uh, their, their souls are dark. You know, it's just no humanity in them. You can't see any humanity coming from their eyes at all. Do you see what I'm saying? And so it's just unfortunate. But I'm going to get off for you guys. We are in our hour. You guys have a nice day. You stay. You guys stay prayed up, you know, and watch your back. You see what I'm saying? This article do a short video. Is that right? Uh, you guys stay prayed up, uh, you know, and just, just watch out, you know, and uh, you got to be careful, you know. I'm glad when I'm able to catch you live. You always with the info. Thank you, Devin Bucks. But anyway, like I said, I'm going to talk to you guys later. All right. Please like this video on the way out the door. Please hit the subscribe button if you found this video uh, informative in any way. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to talk to you guys later. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Peace.